Did you know that more than 300 million people today are finding love online? That's pretty much the population of the US, the third most populated country in the world. Did you also know that 70% of those 300 million plus people said that they found a romantic relationship online at some point? This is the world that Kirat Assi was living in, a world where it was becoming more and more common to find love, companionship and connection online. but also a world where deception, scam and abuse behind a screen ran rampant. This is the story of a decade long romance that never actually existed in reality. This is the story of Kirat Assi and her love Bobby. Hi everyone, welcome to Desi Crime, a show where we dive deep into some of the craziest cases from around South Asia. I'm your host Ashwarya and I'm Aryan. And the case I have for you today puts every online scam to shame. Before we begin this case though, we want to thank the work done by Tortoise Media and their reporter Alexi Mostris for his investigative podcast on this case called Sweet Bobby. The podcast and Alexi's first-hand interviews of the player in this case have been an invaluable source for us. So a couple of weeks ago Ashwara I was grabbing a cup of coffee with a dear friend of mine mm. and she knows that I'm a true crime podcaster so she asks me if I've heard the podcast Sweet Bobby mm-hmm. a podcast that you had been telling me to listen for ever so long yeah I tell her I haven't I'm not a big true crime podcast listener although I host one uh and she begins to tell me the story Okay 20 seconds into her telling me the story I stop her I call you up yeah. and I tell you Ashwarya you need to cover this story on our podcast because as much as I like my friend I want to hear it from you because it's just it's so mind blowing I agree and there's been this trend obviously of an increase in this kind of crime with the advent of technology and dating apps and the world that we live in now and there have been so many pieces of content made on it as well it's mm. like the tinder swindlers of yeah, the world yeah, yeah. and the puppet masters all increasingly famous documentaries and podcasts on these cases but nothing quite compares to the madness <laughs> of this case like it's it's absolutely completely unbelievable so I'm really excited to take you guys Please into it Please tell me about it We're beginning this story in the spring of 2011 when 31-year-old Harkirat Kaur Assi or Kirat as everyone calls her goes out with her friends for a fun evening of partying to a club called Lolo's in Brighton a little bit outside of London. Kirat describes it as a cheesy club with a Hawaiian theme going on but some nights are fun purely because of company and this was such a night. Kirat was surrounded by some of her closest and dearest friends. They were all drinking, dancing, partying and having fun. Hours passed by and it's 1 a.m. The party's still going. 1 a.m. is no time to go home on a group party evening after all. But it's at 1 a.m. when a turbaned man enters the club with a friend. Kirat noticed him immediately. A turbaned man stands out in a UK club. The closer she looks at him though, the more she realizes she knows this man. It's Bobby. Bobby isn't just a random acquaintance she doesn't know super well. He's a man she's been talking to on Facebook multiple times a week for the last 5 months about some of the most intimate details of her life and he has too. But the two have never actually met in person before. So naturally, Kira decides to walk over and say hi. "Bobby," she screams in the club's noise, and Bobby turns. The two say hi. Bobby seems friendly but not as friendly as he should be considering their equation so Kirat feels like maybe he didn't recognize her in the dark club and loud distracting music so she clarifies it's me Kirat her Kirat but Bobby doesn't seem to know her this is a little weird to Kirat but she has a hunch that Bobby may be slightly drunk he did seem a little spaced out maybe that's what it is she thinks She doesn't want to embarrass him any further because he's always been so respectful to her online. So when he can't seem to place her, she just says goodnight and walks away. 
this seemingly harmless albeit slightly strange interaction was going to determine the course of the next 10 years in Kirat's life had only Kirat persisted a little harder or Bobby been weirded out and asked more questions or the two met outside of a crazy loud and dark club maybe Kirat could have stumbled on the truth much sooner than she actually did Maybe she could have saved herself a decade of heartbreak, a destroyed sense of self and a shattered life. But that's not how it was meant to go. I'm trying to rack my brain to think of a situation where I have uh, come across somebody mm-hmm. who I should absolutely know or mm-hmm. they should absolutely know me yeah. and one of us has just failed to recall. Yeah. Is that normal or is has that happened to you think of an online equation aran a purely online one let's say you match with someone online some girl that you've been talking to there's no facebook months? imagine there's no there's no like photo sure, album sure, sure. instagram yeah. snapchat you can't stalk the heck you out can't stalk the heck out of them this is not someone you've been facetiming on the regular it's just someone who's a friend you talk a couple times a week maybe you've developed sort of a camaraderie and an sure, equation sure sure and you just run into them and they're like huh in a dark club kind of spaced out it is a little bit weird i don't think oh no it's it's very weird but i'm just like haven't we faced those situations sh- situations f- with people we've known in person you know like you meeting a friend a dear friend mm-hmm. a year or two on and there's that you know Five minutes of just looking okay, and just who making. Who are you? Yeah, yeah. Do, do, do I know? Yeah, yeah. Which is why I don't think it's super weird that because it's online. You know, right. they've never met in person. And online in 2011, like vastly different than yeah, online but, now, where we're yeah. all like have our faces plastered all the mm. way. So, hold on though. Our answer questions aside, and all of these points above aside, who the hell is Kirat, and who is Bobby? And why was this moment Kirat's one glaring encounter with the truth that she ended up missing? To find that out, we have to go six months back to the year 2010, when a 30-year-old British Indian woman, her Kirat Kaur Asi or Kirat, was working as a radio host for a local British Punjabi radio station called Desi Radio. Shout out! Shout out to Shout the Desi Radio! Shout out to Desi Radio! Am I right, Desi <laughs> Radio? It would be an understatement to say that Kirat loved her job. Described as a natural born talker, Kirat captivated her audience with her words and made countless Desi London car rides more fun than they were meant to be. In the podcast Sweet Bobby, Kirat comes forward to talk about this time in her life. Things weren't perfect, she says. Of course there were problems, but she was excited for what her life had in store for her. She had a stable career, but she looked forward to having a family and meeting a lovely man and getting married. her life had possibilities that is no longer the case anymore at 41 now kirat's life has been pummeled over and precious years have been wasted there are no prospects anymore what happened between 2010 and 2008 that could lead to such a different life it all began with a single text received by kirat on facebook in november of 2010 hey kirat i hope you're well it's jj's brother Hope you got the message from Simran regarding a note he had written. He'd always put in a good word for you. You got his better side. Looked up to you as a big sister as he told us. Kind regards, Bobby. Now this text might sound random to you because you're assuming that Kira doesn't know Bobby, but that's not true. She sort of did. You see JJ, the person Bobby mentions in his Facebook message was Kira's cousin's boyfriend. Kirat had a cousin named Simran who was 17 in the year 2010 so about 10 years younger than Kirat and was dating JJ but like any young couple JJ and Simran's relationship was on and off in the past when JJ and Simran broke up JJ had reached out to Kirat asking for advice on how to win Simran back again that's how Kirat and JJ began texting with Kirat helping JJ as an older sister Then in August of 2010 JJ had very suddenly died from a bad allergic reaction A month after that, Bobby, JJ's brother, was texting Kirat saying thank you to her for her being there for JJ when he needed her. So you're you're saying Kirat's cousin, a mm-hmm. uh, 17-year-old Simran, Simran, yeah, was dating JJ right. on and off, yeah, and out of nowhere, this kid suddenly dies, dies. because of an allergic reaction, right? And his younger brother, older is, brother, older brother is Bobby, Bobby. yeah, and. And so okay so Bobby and Kirat then have that camaraderie of you've been there for my brother, for my brother and right. thank you. Precisely and JJ's and Kirat's relationship was such where 
because of their on again off again relationship between JJ mm-hmm. and Simran JJ was reaching out to Kira saying yeah, hey yeah, like that. is she okay like help me text yeah, yeah, her yeah, help yeah. me get her back she's blocked me that kind of stuff Got it. and so that's why Bobby saying thank you like you were there for my brother he's now passed away we're all grieving hmm. but thank you for the role you played in helping him Got it got it but Kirat knew Bobby through other links as well. Kirat and Bobby were both part of the rather close-knit Sikh community in London, and so Kirat knew of him through relatives and family members. Plus, Kirat and Bobby both came from Indian families that had migrated from India to Kenya before moving to Europe, much like Annie Hindocha's family in the honeymoon murder case. So they knew each other through that link too. Unlike any other random person that you or I are likely to meet on Tinder or Hinge today, Kirat and Bobby actually ran in the same circles. They very much existed and even knew of each other's existence before they ever connected on Facebook and had many mutual friends on social media. And so inherently, right at the outset, there was trust. Hell, even Kirat's cousin, Simran, JJ's girlfriend, had confirmed that Bobby was in fact her now deceased boyfriend's brother. He was a cardiologist, he was happily married, he was handsome, etc, etc. But that is how Kirat and Bobby began talking. And slowly, Bobby began confiding in Kirat. He had just lost his younger brother after all and Kirat was his watchful shoulder to cry on. There was nothing romantic here, especially because Bobby was married and Kirat was also in an on-again, off-again relationship, but only two people coming together, becoming friends over shared grief. As the grief passed, they became friends over more than just sorrow. When Bobby was expecting a baby with his wife, for example, Kirat was who he talked to about how happy he was and the names he was confused between. Some of these conversations were always a little bit weird to Kirat. Why isn't he talking to his own wife about all of this, she thought. He's a man who just needs a friend, she always ended up convincing herself. And so she did talk to him and they did become friends. Even at this point though, months after they first connected, the two aren't talking every day. Just randomly a couple times a week maybe. And Kirat says it best herself in the Sweet Bobby podcast. This was an era before Facebook Messenger. It wasn't texting back and forth like it is today. It was a long text by Kirat followed by a long text by Bobby hours or even days later. almost like writing letters slowly though bobby's life began to shift in front of kirat he separated from his wife hated his work and was down in the dumps so all these things that you are talking about the separation from his wife life being shitty mm-hmm. this is all corroborated by what he was telling kirat yes, in on conversations okay. on facebook messenger so like months and months worth of text messages all of which kirat has to this date saved mm-hmm. and compiled it's all in there and were there like you know was he posting anything on facebook at the time anything that would be suggestive yeah, of yeah. life not you know you know we all have that one friend or relative that you can just see their instagram story and, know what and you know through. oh my god something they're wrong. going through something yeah, so yeah. was that happening with this phase not necessarily that bobby was very expressive with the fact that there was all of this grief in his life hmm. but bobby was a regular poster like any other person he would post his family occasionally when he had a baby he would post his baby occasionally okay so that's how he was okay. expressive and that that profile was an active profile it was an active profile and yeah, with was, common friends and everything with common friends and everything mm-hmm. okay got it Bobby wasn't the only one with problems though. Kira too had problems with her boyfriend and so the two got closer. It was around this time, 5 months into talking in the year 2011, that Kira and Bobby came face to face for the very first time in Lolo's, the Hawaiian club where Bobby didn't recognize her. I don't know that you have all of this background into that equation. Is it any weirder to you that Bobby didn't recognize her in the club or it's still just the same? No, it's super weird. It's still weird. Yeah, I yeah. I mean you know you could argue this but there would be people who would say this technically qualifies for not cheating but you know not being uh, not being fair with your partner right sure, like you having you're having an yeah. emotional deep deep emotional relationship that you haven't informed the partner other partner about yeah where um, divulging really private information very private information yeah. talking about every little intimate detail and then not recognizing them of course that's weird that's yeah. just off i agree yeah <laughs> Whether or not the club incident was weird though what happened after it certainly was after this incident bobby became distant eventually he moved out of the uk to australia having divorced his wife and got married a second time to an australian woman he even invited kira to his wedding and while she didn't go she saw pictures of the wedding online 
Her life too moved on. She switched jobs, even worked on the London Olympics, made new friends, found a new partner, and kind of forgot that Bobby ever seriously featured in her life. For two years, this is what their equation had become: virtually non-existent. But after two years, in November of 2013, on one random day at work, Bobby came crashing into Kirat's life again through a post on Facebook made by Bobby's friend. Bobby had been shot in Kenya. The post had photos too of a seriously injured Bobby lying on a hospital bed in a coma. There was no reason to think this post was a lie or anything. It was posted by a friend of Bobby's. Bobby was tagged in it. Friends and family were seeing it, liking and commenting on it. Kirat's cousin Simran was in Kenya at the time and confirmed the news to be true, and the photo was right there for proof. More importantly though, this incident led to Kirat beginning conversations with Bobby's friend, the one who made the post, and Bobby's new wife. In fact, they were all part of a group, 39 people exactly, who were all close to Bobby and making sure they all spoke to help Bobby with his recovery. Kirat knew multiple people in this group just like she knew Bobby, through family or the close Sikh community or through mutual friends. They all found support in each other as Bobby went in and out of a coma over several weeks, tried to commit suicide, went through countless strokes and seizures and was semi-paralyzed. until he finally woke up enough to talk to kirat see i obviously don't know what internet culture was like in 2013 but these millennials seem weird <laughs> like a the details they are sharing on a public forum sure uh and discussing it with an intimate group of 39 but in that intimate group one is a, somebody who's just once met yeah person, and talk to uh, him like 2 years ago and the last time kind of didn't even rec- the other person in recognize yeah. them that and Why would why would his Bobby's friend post pictures of him injured? Now this could be an internet thing. Like today, it's virtue signaling in my right. opinion, right? But twenty thirteen internet culture was different. So maybe it was just sharing with your close Facebook friends that he's injured. Let's that he's all injured. Sort of come together. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like you said, I don't think I'm fully aware of the culture back then. Um, at the face of it, it seems like maybe an overly expressive and overly active. social mm. media family coming together yeah, because there are families be. like that yeah, right oh, that post a ton group whatsapp chat. group families uh, right, okay, yeah okay, so no, maybe definitely. it's something to that effect that's the millennial yeah. whatsapp group equivalent mm-hmm. okay no that makes sense bobby had finally woken up enough to talk to kirat now he had lost part of his memory and so didn't really remember the time that he and kirat texted but he did remember kirat being a friend to his younger brother jj the two spoke some more before bobby went into a coma once again And then Kirat got the news. Bobby had passed away in 2014 having succumbed to his injuries. That group of 39 people grieved together as they posted wishes and messages of support and strength to each other. So Anand's reactions are wild. <laughs> so this this uh, Bobby's wife was on the group, right? She was, yeah. So she was actively grieving on the group. Right, and so were like multiple other family members. In the sense that they were all saying, "All right, you know, how are you doing today? Do you want us to send food to you? That kind of support to each other." Yeah, but then, of... okay, it just doesn't make. What is odd to you, like? What is odd to me is that uh, I think there is some kind of a scam going on, but there it, it doesn't make sense for there to be a scam if it is literally corroborated That's by mutual saying. friends right, and like so, right. so there is no scam so nothing that, about the story seem like a scam right because it doesn't to no, me no 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 i mean i'm trying to look for the scam right. but i can't see it yeah no and it, it's it's, it's disturbing it's just a close family dude it's just like a really close okay. family on facebook giving each other support sure, for sure. dead family members sure <laughs> But obviously the story can't end here right how can bobby die how is the centerpiece of this love story and this operation already non existent the love story hasn't even begun yet how could he die well he couldn't and he didn't you see months after bobby's death kirat got a text from bobby's widowed wife who tells kirat that there is something kirat must know and to know it Kirat should talk to her cousin Simran, the same Simran who dated Bobby's now deceased younger brother. This was weird to Kirat because she wasn't that involved or that close to anyone in the story. She was merely lending support to the wife of a man she knew once many years ago as a sort of friend. She didn't need to know anything. But then Kirat got a call from Simran who gave Kirat perhaps the most unbelievable piece of information in the story so far. 
Bobby was alive and in witness protection in the US. Is fucking Jason Bourne or some shit? What is this Bobby guy? <laughs> and what's up with the witness protection? Like it's so filmy, it's so over the top. And US? Yeah. Kenya and then US. UK, Kenya and then the US witness. Witness protection. protection. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. I agree, okay. But Just yeah. continue. Yeah. He was admitted in a hospital because he was partially paralyzed from the shooting, and the hospital's name or the doctor's name couldn't be shared with Kirat for security reasons. Throughout this time, the years 2014 and 2015, Bobby's life seemed like it was in shambles, and Kirat was all he had. His wife had grown distant, barely visiting when he was in the hospital. Bobby had started drinking a lot, borderline suicidal, and on a road to destroying his life. When suddenly one day Bobby confesses to Kira that he has feelings for her. He says he's had feelings for her for a while actually. Somewhere deep down a part of Kira felt like she did have feelings for Bobby too. And so by Valentine's Day of 2015 the two were officially together. While he was in witness protection and in a hospital like partially paralyzed unable to reveal any other details to her. But listen listen to why okay let me let me okay, go on. Okay okay. Kira says that initially in the relationship she didn't necessarily have very deep romantic feelings for him. She loved him as a friend, sure, and he was a friend on the verge of dying. Doctors had said that he didn't have a very long time to live and the two were countries apart so there was no physical connection either. I swear the doctors didn't say anything. He is saying doctors said something. Yes, right, of course. Yes, I just no, want to point also, that. No, but also Kirat spoke to like Bobby's nurse and Kirat spoke to specialists on his team. That was an ongoing conversation. Kirat spoke to them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they they said, "Yep. Yeah, he's not going to survive." And there were reports sent to Kirat like there was all sorts of information to corroborate Bobby's story. Aran's really trying to how, look for a scam but he just can't find did, one. How did Kirat talk to the nurses like on phone or via chat. Yeah, on I the specific details like I don't necessarily know, but on call with a lot of people on call, like That a lot of Bobby's family members so on call. Okay, okay. So he's in witness protection and injured. And see, the thing is, the thing that's the thing with the story, it's not just Bobby telling Kirat this information. It's not even just the doctors. It's an ex-wife. It's Bobby's yeah, friends, yeah, it's Bobby's yeah. cousin, it's her own cousin. It's like seven different people from different parts of yeah. her life confirming the same story. Hmm. Oh, sweet Bobby. <laughs> so Kirat had begun this romantic relationship with Bobby, yes, but there was not much there. The two were countries apart. There was no physical connection. She didn't necessarily have romantic feelings for him either. A part of Kirat feels like she was just trying to make a very sick dying friend happy when she entered the relationship. But to everyone's surprise, Bobby survived and his health got better. As that happened, then Kirat went on to develop real and deep feelings for him. Feelings is an understatement, though. Kirat fell madly in love, and it seemed like so did Bobby. The vast catalog of texts, voice messages, and calls that Kirat still has saved with her show the development of their romance. And on the face of it, weird details of Bobby's life ignored. It was a romance like any other, innocent, childlike, and beautiful. This is something Alexi Mostris from Sweet Bobby brings up. The two used to have hours long Skype calls with each other, some lasting 13 hours where they would fall asleep with the sound of each other breathing or cook food together or watch shows on TV together. I'm currently in a long distance relationship across a rather brutal time zone and so I find these details really cute. All of us have done this in some way shape or form at some point in our life. But with Bobby and Kirat there was one key difference. a detail that to many of us might even be a relationship deal breaker bobby's camera was never on and his face never visible he is that employee in a zoom meeting that switches all on. of us no no no, no. All of us. not all of us guys Me. ashwarya any team meeting this woman's camera is off and i am whatsapp texting her just be present for everybody to see your face and she'll switch on the camera completely Like, like she's just woken up. That's such a lie. Yeah, that's absolutely like literally. My videographer happened. can attest to this behind the camera. Is her mic ever on? Oh, no, camera. No, mic is not camera, on. Camera, camera, camera. Never. Camera is never on. I agree. See? But I never like turn it on halfway, disheveled like that. That's not a thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, Bobby and Ashwara got something in common. 
Bobby's voice on those calls too was a weird detail. It was always in whispers because of his damaged vocal cords from the accident. <laughs> This is he's bullshitting now, right? I mean, yeah. This is this These are the two details that make me go, okay. Okay, this should have made you feel like what the hell? But it's preposterous. But is it easy for us to feel this way and question these details because we know where this is headed when nothing else ever points to that. But two details are it. weird. I get it, but the dude is in witness protection, paralyzed, a drunkard and suddenly his voice is larynx is all no, it has been. It always has been since the accident. Fine, fine. Okay, I will believe this and we continue. We continue. There were other weird details too though. Of course. He would promise to transfer to a hospital in London from his Manhattan hospital and set a date for it too. Hirath would get excited and pick out an outfit and gush over their first time seeing each other when something would go wrong and Bobby would have to cancel this plan. This happened over and over again. Now, there are a lot of very, very legitimate questions that Aryan has asked throughout this episode and I'm sure you're asking them too. I don't have answers to all of those individual questions and probably neither does Kirat. What we do have though is an overarching story so convoluted and so controlling that it's no longer terribly surprising that Kirat didn't ask more questions or wasn't more suspicious. For example, one time when Bobby was supposed to arrive in London, he picked a fight with Kirat the last minute and ended up having a heart attack on call, which Kirat heard, meaning he obviously couldn't come anymore. Kirat decided she was going to go see him if he couldn't come. But as she was at the airport, she got a call from Bobby's cousin, who basically told her that she was at fault for having caused the heart attack. And so she shouldn't come see him right now, give him some space. And let me just... Remind the audience. Mm -hmm. Bobby's a cardiologist, right? Yes. But Bobby's a really sick man. <laughs> Who gets a heart attack because of a fight right. he instigated? Right, no, that's instigated? nonsense. That's obviously nonsense. There is like, gaslighting, Ashwarya. Yeah, I agree. And then there is gaslighting. Yeah, and then there is the gaslighting that Kirat endured. Yeah. I agree. No, this is absurd. What? Okay. Anyway, yeah, I mean. I'll continue. I think I've heard it all now. I'll continue. <laughs> In a completely different instance, in 2016, Bobby had asked Kirat for help in picking out baby clothes for his son. Kirat went out and found clothes for the baby that she liked and sent Bobby pictures of them. Days later, Bobby ended up sharing pictures of his kid with Kirat in some of the very clothes that Kirat had asked him to buy. These incidents built trust. Why was she okay never seeing his face on Skype? Because from everything else, she had every reason to believe Bobby and who he said he was. He had a son wearing clothes that she suggested a week ago. He had an ex-wife she chatted with. He had cousins that her parents knew. She was in a group chat with Bobby's extended family that included people she knew from before she even knew Bobby. People who talked and texted and sent photos. There was also internal family politics in this group, where one member had left because they didn't like Kirat and were loyal to Bobby's ex-wife instead. Conversely, Bobby talked to Kirat's family too, giving them details that they would then tell Kirat, making Bobby even more real. How could all this be false? It was simply too elaborate for the idea of this being false to even enter Kirat's mind. There are countless incidents like this one which give us a peek into Bobby's manipulation. Slowly over time, Bobby became more and more obsessive, exercising more and more control over Kirat's life. He would bombard Kirat with love and gifts and messages and promises and texts and dates and affection only to withdraw it all very suddenly so she would then do anything to regain that level of intimacy again. Making Kirat desperate like that over and over again slowly chipped away at her own sense of self and gave Bobby more and more control. He needed to know exactly where she was at every given moment in time, exactly who she was with always and exactly what she was doing. He would get offended or end up having a stroke or would threaten to cheat on her with his nurse if she tried to study to gain a higher qualification or look for a new job or if she tried to get her eyebrows done up at a salon without letting him know first or if she posted something on Facebook he didn't like or if someone called into her radio show and said something he didn't like or if she went to get a mammogram during a breast cancer scare and the doctor ended up being a man. Kirat had even told her best friends, don't touch me, don't hug me, I belong to Bobby, because she was so scared. 
She lost her job, quit her radio show, lost a ton of weight and isolated all of her friends and family. Throughout all of this, Poppy was constantly sick, still in the hospital with so many ailments that Kirat says she couldn't even begin to list them if she tried. This sickness of his is also a tactic of control to me. He's making himself a victim by default, and so Kirat never can be, because Bobby's stroke will always be more serious than whatever small thing Kirat felt bad about. Obviously, she won't consider walking out on him when she's busy keeping him alive. All of that waiting and anticipation and agitation on Kirat's part ended, however, in February 2018, when after Kirat putting her foot down once and for all, Poppy actually finally arrived in London. At this point, it had been three years since they had started dating and it was going to be the second time after that night in the Brighton club that Kirat was going to see Bobby face to face. Kirat was tracking his flights and he did land, but his flight landing didn't mean that Kirat now got to see Bobby. He was first staying at a hotel in London, but then says that he wasn't ready to see Kirat. Then after many days, claimed that his grandmother was so sick that he needed to be with her instead. Then he begins to claim that his own health is deteriorating because a cancer that he had a long time ago has now returned and that's why he couldn't meet Kirat. Kirat did show up at the hotel that he was supposed to be at, but the hotel told her that he wasn't there. An angry and sad Kirat calls her cousin Simran, JJ's girlfriend Simran, to confide in her about how he just wouldn't see her. And Simran lends Kirat a shoulder to cry on. Simran had been that person for Kirat all through the relationship, and Kirat trusted her. Shortly after her call with Simran, though, Kirat got a call from Bobby. Bobby said the hotel staff had informed him that she was there to see him, and that he was the one who told the staff to not let any visitors know that he was there because he wasn't ready to see anyone. Kirat recounts this day and says she didn't once assume that Bobby wasn't actually there at the hotel. She just was sad that he didn't want to see her. This went on for months after Bobby landed in London, with Bobby's family telling Kirat to give Bobby some space because of how sick he was, and Kirat's family expecting to meet the man that their daughter was dating. All of this was causing Kirat to lose her mind. She was lying to her parents, telling them that she was actually seeing Bobby, when instead she sat alone in her car for hours. A part of Kirat hoped that if she went on a long walk someday, she would just wander off and something would happen to her and she'd just never return to her reality. Kirat was reaching her wit's end and just wanted answers. There were weird details that were now sticking out to her, like a phone call with Bobby where the noise in the background from his side of the call just didn't sound like London. And so Kirat did what she probably should have done a long time ago. She hires a private investigator. All she wants to know is, where is Bobby? She needs his address only and only to confirm whether or not he's telling her the truth about his location. And the investigator gets her the address. It's just not in London. It's Brighton, where the club was eight years ago, where she first ran into Bobby. Bobby was lying, but about what she didn't exactly know. By June 10th, 2018, Kirat had had enough. She was unhappy and her life had never been so devoid of love and hope before. That June, one afternoon, she had an argument with Bobby over something really petty and decided to go for a drive to be able to think straight again. This drive was meant to be random, but somewhere along the way, Kira decided to use the address she had from the private investigator and just show up at the house to see Bobby. All she wanted to do was to show him that seeing each other wasn't bad and that they could handle it, that he could handle it. And so Kirat began her two-hour long journey to see her partner of three years for only the second time ever. As Kirat pulls into Bobby's home's driveway, it all looks a little familiar from photos Bobby has shared. Little does she know though, inside the home, Bobby and his wife, happily married for many years, are putting their son to sleep. Huh? <laughs> We're getting to it. I don't even know what to say to you. I am not even guessing. <laughs> Good. I'm just rolling <laughs> with it. You don't do it either. Just shut your brains off and just keep listening to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hirat gathers every ounce of courage she has and rings the home doorbell. Bobby opens and sees a woman he doesn't recognize at all. Oh, it's the Hawaiian bar all over again. It's all o- absolutely. <laughs> uh, yo, 
Just keep it saying. You Turn your brain off. Do yeah. Sure, like Haryan said, he had seen her at a bar eight years ago, but even that night he didn't remember her. In her eyes, though, he sees anger and sadness. How could you do this? Eight years, eight years. Kirat screams at him. Bobby is scared of this random woman in his driveway, <laughs> claiming to know him. But a part of him thinks maybe she has him confused for his brother Jay, and so he tells her, "Maybe you're looking for Jay. We're often confused for each other." But Kirat knows who she's looking for. The man she has been falling asleep to for the last three years. It's Bobby, not his brother Jay. That's because Jay was dead of a allergic reaction. That's what Kira thinks. But from the way Bobby is talking in this interaction, it doesn't sound like Bobby thinks Jay is dead. Because he's saying, "Are you looking for Jay?" Like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> are you looking for a Jay? <laughs> Is what I'm looking for right now. Because <laughs> this story doesn't make any sense <laughs> we'll to me. We'll get to it. Switch your brain off again. <laughs> okay. Continue. In the middle of this heated conversation, Bobby's wife walks down, who Kira thought was his ex-wife. The moment Kira sees her, she feels like she has her answers. That's why Bobby is being so weird. He's cheating on her with his ex-wife. Bobby is now telling his wife that he has no idea who this woman is, and his wife is believing him. To try and convince them, Kira pulls out her phone to show them Bobby's number that she has saved. The contact image and the name are both Bobby's. but the phone number is not she even made him call her number so she could see whether or not he had her number saved but sure enough when he dialed it he didn't have her number on his phone ashwarya imagine if this bobby is in bobby or is in lying mm-hmm. right what a weird thing what a to weird happen encounter. in your life so weird i mean i so think weird. bobby probably just like us had to turn his brain off yeah absolutely and bobby someone like standing there with his wife who's believing him bobby's a cardiologist for the nhs for... he's to put up with this shit he's not actually we'll get to it let's just let's brains off oh my god brains God-sha. off we're getting to it okay. we're getting to it i'm not i'm okay i'm not okay, okay. i'm not okay, okay good <laughs> Despite all of this phone number charade though Kirat still couldn't believe him. He must be lying in front of his ex-wife. How do I know you don't have two numbers? She remembers saying. But in the middle of this conversation something happens that gives Kirat a pit in her stomach. As she's standing on Bobby's home's entrance talking to him and supposedly his wife, Kirat's phone rings. It's Bobby, but not the Bobby in front of her. Kirat picks up and talks to the person on the phone and cuts the call. She's questioning everything. A part of her now feels like Bobby's wife, who by this time has gone inside, has used a different phone to call her pretending to be Bobby. But she knows she needs to clear this up, and the only person she can think of who could help clear this up is Simran. Her cousin Simran, Simran who visited Bobby in the hospital in Kenya when he was shot, Simran who dated Bobby's dead younger brother, Simran who has been her one and only confidant through this tumultuous relationship. Let me call Simran, Kirat says. That name rings a bell in Bobby's mind. His brother used to date a girl named Simran years ago. Is this Simran Bogal by any chance? Bobby asks. It is. It is exactly that Simran. When Kirat calls Simran in front of Bobby, Bobby speaks to her too. Simran calms Bobby down by telling him that Kirat is her cousin and she's just confused and that Simran will help clear it all up. She then even calms Kirat down by telling Kirat that Bobby was behaving this way because of his ex-wife. With the situation a little bit calmer now, Kirat decides to head home even though she's crying so much she can barely see from her own eyes. On her way home though Kirat picks up Simran and they both head to the nearest police station while on the other hand Bobby and his wife have called the police too After filing two individual and separate reports Bobby and his wife went to sleep hoping to never have to deal with this again and Kirat and Simran went to their respective homes Kirat knew her life would never be the same again but a part of her thought that the worst was behind her her partner was caught cheating that was the worst Little did she know though the real nightmare was about to begin the next morning when Simran pulled into Kirat's home. Kirat saw her car arrive but noticed that Simran didn't exit the car right away. Her brother was in the car with her and it looked like the two of them were arguing. 
Kirat felt iffy about this right from the start and ran downstairs to open the door for Simran, a girl she had viewed as her baby sister, someone she had tried to protect from the world. A part of Kirat wanted to say sorry to Simran for pulling her into her drama this way and using up her time and energy. But as Simran walked to Kirat's door that morning, it was Simran who apologized. I need to tell you something, Simran said. Kirat asked if she wanted to come inside the home. I don't think I should, she responded. I need to tell you something. A sentence that left Simran's mouth multiple times that morning and that gave Kirat a pit in her stomach. Something was wrong. And then four words left Simran's mouth that brought Kirat's world crashing down. It was all me. I was Bobby. Bobby is me. That's I mean, I don't I that's psychopathic. That's so You still don't know the extent of it. It's Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm again brains off. You keep We're talking. Getting to it. Keep talking. I was Bobby and Bobby is me is what Simran said. Kira didn't quite understand in the beginning. She wondered if Simran had been threatened by Bobby to say this. But Simran was adamant. She was Bobby. What about JJ, Simran's own boyfriend who had died, which was the reason Bobby messaged Kira to begin with? It was Simran. JJ existed and was real but was also very much alive. God damn. What about Bobby's cousin who called when Kirat was at the airport about to go see him in New York? That was Simran. What about Bobby's two wives? Simran. What about Bobby's friend who put up the Facebook post of his death? Simran. Also Simran, the medical team that took care of Bobby? Also Simran. Simran. What about the 39 people in the group chat? No way. All Simran. What about the 20 some family members in the other group chat? Oh my They god. They were all Simran. The next thing Kirat remembers is collapsing against the wall. She asked Simran every question that's probably running through your mind right now. Why did you do this to me? What did I ever do to you? You had so many chances to stop. Why didn't you just stop? But Simran had no apologies to make, no real explanations either. Even this morning after confessing to the damage she had caused, Simran seemed cold, calculating and distant. In the midst of this whole conversation, it suddenly dawned on Kirat that she had been falling asleep to the sound of Simran breathing oh every night for so many years. It was this realization that really got to her. It was this that made her throw up and pass out. If you haven't fully understood what the hell happened in the story so far, let me explain it to you as simply as I can. There is a Bobby, the real Bobby, the one Kirat met at the club eight years ago, and the one whose house she showed up to in 2018. That Bobby is happily married with a son, is not a cardiologist, has never been in witness protection, has never been in a hospital for more than a few hours, and most importantly, has never had a relationship with Kirat. The Bobby that Kirat has been speaking with is not this one. but it's based on this one the life of kirat's bobby intertwines with the life of real bobby occasionally for example kirat knows the name of real bobby's parents and siblings and friends and son and ex-wife or real wife not only is kirat's bobby fake though so is everyone from bobby's life that kirat has ever talked to almost 60 characters were created by simran all of whom have a different personality a different tone of writing a different life story But some of these sixty characters are based on people that do exist in reality. So you're telling me, all Kirat needed was a creative writing class. I don't think that would have cut it. She's that's she's, she's J.K. Rowling. And that's she. She has she's woven. She's psychopathic. A, she's insane. I don't know. I think I'm insane now. Yeah, me because too. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I. My brain's like not working properly right now. This yeah, is so convoluted. I totally understand. To to I to create sixty fictional people mm-hmm. and talk between yourself. It's like playing doubles tennis. Oh yeah. But you're the only player, yeah. and you're playing doubles table tennis simultaneously, Absolutely. and you're playing cricket. But you are the bowler yeah, and the yeah, batsman. Yeah, I agree. Because I remember you talking about the political drama in the family, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. figment of her imagination, imagination that she is. 
Absolutely. And it's not like this was only taking over Kirat's life. It was equally of as course. much taking over Simran's life. And Simran's own friends have come forward to say that there were times where Simran would uh, not engage or not partake in their girls' night outs because uh-huh. she would say she had a call in UK time. And so a lot of people now assume that what she called a work meeting was actually just her date night calls with Kira. That is so mad. And so she was losing out on real actual experiences because she was engaged in this fantasy. It's wild. It's absurd. Do we know why? We're coming to it. It is this complex intermingling of fact and fiction that made fake Bobby easy to trust. Because part of the story involves lots of fake characters who were based on very real people that Kirat's parents knew, or Kirat's school friends knew, or who Kirat had run into during events and celebrations. Alexi Mostris puts it best. The important thing is that this cast of characters work together. They exist to affirm each other's allegations even when they seemed unbelievable. In domestic abuse cases, such behavior is called toxic triangulation, making something real by having more than one person confirm it. So every time Kirat doubted something, someone she trusted confirmed that it was true. This was the web of lies and deceit that Kirat's younger cousin had spun. But the reason didn't fully make sense yet. Simran was, as far as we all know, a straight young woman who gained no sexual pleasure from doing this like a lot of other catfishes. Kira didn't transfer vast sums of money to Bobby and Bobby never asked, so Simran didn't seem to have a monetary motive to this either. Kira and Simran had a loving and caring relationship, so Simran didn't do this for revenge or out of spite. So then, why? The complete answer to this is only with Simran, but a development in Sweet Bobby gives us some insight. You see, when Kirat tried to file a criminal case against Simran, she failed. Catfishing isn't a criminal offence in the UK and the only real victim in this whole saga, according to the police, was real Bobby who had his identity stolen. The police were wrong and coercive and controlling behaviour has been illegal in the UK since 2015, but the police didn't care about that. The police also didn't seem to care that Simran possibly violated many other laws like the Malicious Communications Act. The police even went so far as to insinuate that it was Kirat who had some sort of mental problem and needed to seek help. What Kirat was able to file, however, was a civil case, and in 2020 she won it with a quote, substantial settlement. As part of this settlement, Kirat also received an apology from Simran. Simran's only condition for the apology was that it had to be completely private, with nobody allowed to read it or make other copies of it. Kirat was unwilling to accept that, and so, Kirat and Simran's lawyers reached an agreement where Simran would redraft an apology that she was okay with 30 pre-decided people seeing. Kirat gets to pick the 30 people, but none of those 30 people get to tell other people or make copies of the apology. It's funny, this new apology was so vague that Kirat herself suggested edits to it that Simran went on to accept. So this apology isn't even fully in Simran's own words. But in the saga of editing and redrafting apologies, Kira totally forgot about that first apology, the one meant to be fully private, the one written fully by Simran. That apology is the closest thing anyone has to knowing why Simran did what she did. In that apology, the specifics of which Kira couldn't give out, Simran implies that she had had a hard life too. And in her mind, both her and Kira were gaining some form of joy by escaping to this fantasy world. Later on, Simra says she did try to end the lies and the charade, and that is the reason she was being so mean and so cruel to Kirat, but Kirat was the one who always stuck along. This explanation, to me at least, isn't worth the paper it's written on, because somehow it has come back to being Kirat's fault. She seemed to be enjoying it, and she should have walked out when Bobby got cruel. This seems less like an explanation and more like a diversion. What's most tragic is that while Kira dealt with all of this, the court case and the shame to her family and the loss of her job and friends and connections, Simran continued to hold the position of a vice president at a famous British bank and continued to post online about vacations she was taking. While Simran no longer holds the same job today, I don't believe that is enough accountability at all. But this letter isn't the only insight into Simran's behaviour and patterns. Remember JJ, Simran's boyfriend who had died? His death was the reason Bobby ever texted Kirat. But as I told you, JJ was very alive. JJ and Simran did date back in 2010 and 11, and the chats between JJ and Simran show the world that with Kirat wasn't the first time Simran had created a fake identity to control a relationship. She had done it when she was dating JJ too. 
For example, while JJ was in India during their relationship with Simran in 2010, JJ got a message from a supposed cousin of Simran named Nikki, who tells JJ that Simran had been in a hit and run and was badly injured. If you compare the injuries that Nikki said Simran had to the injuries Bobby's doctors said that Bobby had, they're eerily similar with repeating verbiage. When a distraught JJ told Bobby that his girlfriend had been badly injured, Bobby tried to find where Simran was admitted through his common friends and connections, but no information came up. It was weird to Bobby and JJ even a decade ago. After making a full recovery from this accident very quickly, Simran went on to randomly get sick over and over again many times after that, and the news of these illnesses reached JJ through random cousins or friends of Simran who probably never existed. You see the pattern? In fact, these characters that show up in JJ and Simran's story show up again as the same people in Kirat and Bobby's story. As Moss just describes it, Simran had created a universe of characters that crossed over into different catfishing operations. Despite all of this information that Kirat had collected to show to the authorities though, nobody believed her. Catfishing to everyone is an online joke, not a criminal offense in the eyes of the world. Today Simran roams the world free while Kirat pieces her world back together, unaware when she will find true love again. When we tell you stories of scary strangers or dark alleys or criminal underbellies, we forget to remind you that sometimes evil rests right next to you in the form of a 17-year-old academically brilliant cousin or a young innocent school friend. Evil, as Kirat learned, can be anywhere. And that's why it's even more important to remember to stay safe, stay crazy and stay desi. Mad. Mad. If you like what we do here at Desi Studios and absolutely love what we're wearing today, this is merch you can go buy all for yourself. You can buy this Desi Crime merch in our YouTube store on the link down below at Karak Merch. Keep the engines at Desi Studios rolling so we can pay our videographer right behind the camera to make these amazing episodes just for you.